machines were primitive, and the pilots were a new breed of pioneer. Their cargoes were light. They carried the mail in the same spirit as the Pony Express. Back then, flying wasn't just a means of transportation. It was an adventure. Transoceanic flights are now routine. Business depends on the speed and regularity of air freight. Cargo planes have been designed to carry enormous loads. And airlines account for more than three times as much intercity passenger travel as buses and railroads combined. Civil aviation has become a major industry. It provides transportation. It sells service and it offers career opportunities for men and women through a variety of airborne and land-based occupations. Perhaps some of them will interest you. More than 500,000 persons are employed in civil aviation. Only about one-tenth of them are pilots, but their role is essential. They fly the planes that transport passengers, move cargo, make aerial applications, inspect power lines, and fight fires. Some pilots specialize in charter or sightseeing flights. While many work for large corporations that maintain their own planes. Others train student pilots or give instructions to experienced flyers on new airplanes. They may fly various kinds of craft and haul different loads. But one factor remains constant. The pilot is responsible. Responsible for the plane starting with the pre-flight inspection and responsible for the crew. Although flying does not involve great physical effort, the pilots are often subject to stress and must remain alert and ready to make decisions quickly. Unlike early aviators who went aloft with a few simple gauges and flew by the seat of their pants, modern pilots work with complex equipment and follow sophisticated regulatory systems. They must be prepared to fly on instruments and follow appropriate instructions from ground control stations. In the planes, the captain is assisted by a first officer and perhaps a flight engineer. Beginning first officers are already licensed to fly, and after gaining experience and seniority, they may become captains. With many airlines, this advancement may take five to ten years or longer. Most of the second officers with the airlines are also certified to fly, and as they gain seniority, may advance to first officer and then to captain. Others may only have a flight engineer's license, and they may have qualified for their position after years as an aircraft mechanic. Second officers help with the pre-flight inspection. They make sure the mechanical and electrical devices on board work properly. In the air, they monitor and regulate the engines, air conditioning, and other equipment. The other members of a flight crew are made up from the 39,000 attendants who work for the airlines. 
Their jobs start before passengers arrive. They make sure the cabin is clean and ready, and that all supplies and food have been loaded. Then they greet the passengers coming aboard, check tickets, assist with the passengers' luggage, and give instructions about safety equipment. During a flight, attendants answer questions, help make the passengers comfortable, and may serve meals and beverages. Attendants may be kept busy and on their feet during most of the flight, and even though they may be tired, they must remain tactful and pleasant. So far, we have only discussed members of the flight crew. About four-fifths of all civil aviation employees work on the ground, and that includes some occupations which are important for safe flying, such as mechanics and aircraft maintenance personnel, and air traffic controllers, dispatchers, and communicators. Aircraft mechanics may do routine preventive maintenance during a stopover. They may make minor repairs during a pre-flight check, or they may perform a major overhaul on any part of the plane during a periodic inspection. They need to work with a variety of tools and testing equipment and they must be able to work quickly and with great precision. In some cases, they may also need agility. Most of the 125,000 aircraft mechanics have been approved and licensed by the government. They may be employed by airlines, manufacturing companies, federal agencies, or by small independent repair shops. Mechanics usually remain in the maintenance field but they might advance to such positions as lead mechanic, chief inspector, shop foreman, or maintenance supervisor. Air traffic controllers are the guardians of the flightways. They coordinate flights to prevent accidents and minimize delays in takeoffs and landings. Some regulate airport traffic. Others regulate flights between airports. They must be aware of weather conditions and the performance characteristics of all the planes in their area. Pilots must have permission from the controllers to take off, land, and even to taxi on the runways. En route, controllers use radar equipment to help keep planes on course. They also warn pilots about changing weather fronts and other possible hazards. Because their job is so critical to the safety of air travelers, and because they must keep track of so many variable factors, controllers must work under considerable pressure and meet strict licensing requirements. All 20,000 controllers work for the Federal Aviation Administration. They are assisted by radio operators and teletypists who, using their own language code, pass messages between different ground officials and relay information to pilots in the air. The airlines also have workers with similar jobs. In total, there are about 5,700 radio operators and teletypists in this field. One other occupation directly involved with the coordination of air traffic is held by dispatchers who work for the airlines. There are about 800 of them. They check weather conditions, confirm schedules, and make sure that necessary arrangements have been made and that all federal and company regulations are observed for each flight. Before takeoff, a dispatcher provides the flight crew with information such as route and altitude to be followed and alternate airports which may be used in case of bad weather. Frequently, dispatchers are also responsible for logging such data as the number of hours flown by crew members and planes. The rest of the employees in civil aviation, and there are some 250,000 of them, work on the business side. They hold positions that are common to a transportation industry. This group includes ticket and reservation agents, cargo and freight handlers, and clerical, administrative, and professional personnel. Reservation agents give information on schedules and fares and book passengers. Ticket agents sell tickets, check baggage, fill out forms, and answer questions. Operations agents are in charge of loading and unloading the aircraft. Traffic representatives promote greater use of their airline's freight and passenger service. 
This industry relies heavily on computerized systems to keep track of flight space information as well as to handle other business functions. But there continue to be many general clerical occupations. These positions are usually open to high school or business school graduates. For specialized clerical occupations, such as bookkeepers, on-the-job training may be required. Administrative and sales positions are usually filled by college graduates who have majored in specialties such as law, finance, marketing, or industrial relations. Financial planning in this industry is very important because the planes are so expensive. Because they are responsible for public safety and must be able to function under pressure, pilots, flight engineers, controllers, communications operators, mechanics, and dispatchers must all be tested and licensed by the Federal Aviation Administration. Pilots and controllers must also pass periodic physical examinations. These occupations, however, are extremely well compensated. For example, experienced aircraft mechanics earn 75% more than the average industrial worker. And pilots who work full-time may be paid from $17,000 to $60,000 annually. Many persons in occupations directly involved with flying gained experience and training in the armed forces. There are also civilian training courses for pilots and flight engineers. Airlines generally choose pilots who have at least two years of college. Controllers should also have a college background. They are selected through the competitive federal civil service system, and they are trained by the FAA. While mechanics usually learn their trade on the job or through apprenticeship programs, an increasing number of public vocational schools are offering FAA-approved courses. Flight attendants are usually trained for about five weeks at a school run by an airline. They must be high school graduates, and the college background is frequently helpful. Employment of controllers and some communications workers will be limited in the future because of new equipment. Otherwise, the civil aviation field is expected to grow rapidly, particularly in occupations that deal with the public, such as attendance and reservation and ticket agents. The pay is fairly high throughout the industry. Most airlines have liberal policies regarding vacation time, health insurance, and pension plans. In addition, Airline employees and their immediate families are usually entitled to some free or reduced fare flights. Working conditions are generally good, although overloads of holiday travelers and inclement weather conditions may cause tremendous frustration. Because planes fly around the clock, many employees must work nights, weekends, and holidays. And even for crew members who generally enjoy the opportunity to visit new cities, some of the glamour evaporates when they find themselves on a schedule that leaves them wide awake at irregular hours. About half of all airline employees work at airports near these large cities where major airlines are based. Others work at smaller airports scattered throughout the country. If you think you might be interested in careers in this field, perhaps your school can arrange a visit to a nearby airport you can find out how workers feel about their jobs, what they like and dislike about their working conditions, or their opportunities for developing their careers. Several of the key jobs in this field have strict physical standards. The airlines will be able to give you the exact details of their requirements. Many aviation employees belong to a union, and this would be another source of occupational information. But before you limit yourself to any one field, find out about the entire world of work. Look at other films on careers. Check out books and government publications on occupations from your school or local library. Be sure to talk with your school counselor about the kinds of training necessary for careers that interest you. You might also visit your local state employment office to find out about job opportunities in your community. You should also talk over your ideas with your parents, teachers, and friends. Follow up your interests. 
think about how they might relate to your career. The more information you have on career opportunities, the better position you will be in to make your plans and to take off into the world of work. treats those best who don't rely on it. Let this film and the others in the series help you to discover what your life's work should be. And then, start preparing for it. In the years ahead, they'll probably call you lucky.